you're watching to love swift today i'm doing my favorite books of 2018 this is like my fourth year doing this video or something so you can check that out i didn't read that many books this year for me i almost reached halfway to my goal my goal has usually been 100 so i read like 40 books this year maybe 39 my favorites list are just things that i read for the first time this year most of them didn't come out in 2018 they came out like before then most of them are ya books and I'm gonna start with my 10th favorite and go to my first favorite. There's exactly 10 this year and it was actually pretty easy to narrow it down. Usually I'm at like 15 and it's like hard. There was a lot of like misses this year, lots of books I didn't like. And actually like I was realizing as I was stacking them up, like I don't own that many this year. So that's something that's different is that I didn't like purchase all the books that I read this year and I usually like to buy everything because like, aesthetic but a lot of them most of them came from the library all right so number 10 is geekerella i actually made a book review for this and if you watched it thank you so much geekerella is a retelling of cinderella about this girl she has to kind of make an outfit like a fairy godmother and go to the convention like a ball and she falls in love with the prince of the convention which is like a famous person it was so cute it ended up being like pretty cringy but it still had like so much sparkle in it i just felt like fireworks the author was putting in like personal experience and her personal like devotion to star trek or you know whatever fandom that book was based on um i loved it so very much i feel like i'm gonna keep saying the word cringe because that's something i'm like way more sensitive to i think just as like a 19 year old reading YA, I get like way more annoyed when I'm like, this wouldn't really happen. Like not even that, just I can't explain it because it's not cliches. It's not like if it's unlikely to happen. It's just cringe. So Geekerella had some of that, but honestly, it was more good. Number nine is What If It's Us by Becky Abertali and Adam Silvera. I also had a review for this book, go me. I received an arc of this from my very good friend, Zach. Shout out to Zach again, can't shout out Zach enough. This one definitely had cringe. There were like negative reviews for this and I think I can totally see that, but there was sparkle in this. I wish it was more unique. It felt like a very, very true to life story and I talked about that in my review a lot. This book, like when it was cute, like when it hit that grind and it like got into that zone, like I would just go like a few chapters and be like, this is beautiful like it just did so well every once in a while that i just i was so impressed and there was a lot of pop culture i feel like i i have more complaints for this book than any other but at the same time it managed to be my number nine and really good and unique that's that book okay this is the first time a book from this author has made it to the list and was not number one the first time ever okay it's only been like what four videos but the first time ever number eight goes to cassandra claire it's queen of air and darkness this is the first okay first of all like what is that almost 900 pages this is the first time you guys have heard me talk about this unless you follow me on goodreads goodreads.com slash tulip swift before you get the wrong idea it's a tda book it's cassandra claire i love it so much it was really fun to read it didn't actually take me that long lord of shadows took me like six months this one took me like two weeks, almost three weeks, that's pretty good for me. I have to say, I think it's one of my least favorite Cassandra Clare books, but that doesn't mean it's bad by any means. Like, okay, it's on the list, y'all. It's on the list. It's number eight. That's not that bad. Okay. I don't know if a lot of you guys know this because I don't talk about it a lot because it's such an unpopular opinion. And I like literally just, I don't even feel strongly about it. It's just something personal to me. I love the Mortal Instruments so much and it's like my favorite series ever. I don't really like the Infernal Devices. I didn't feel connected to it. It wasn't for me. So it's not like I've never read a Cassandra Clare book and been like, what? So I had that kind of feeling with this one. The thing about the Dark Artifices, when I read the first and second book, I was like, this is better than TMI. Like, this is the best series she's ever written. And then this one, I'm like, no <laughs> there were complaints but okay i just it's so pretty i love it hi my queen it wasn't perfect but it was good okay now the rest of the video everyone can judge me because they were like she thought this book was better than queen of air and darkness yeah i did you know what i'm sorry number seven <laughs> Spoilers. Number seven is highly illogical behavior by john cory whaley i read this part of my book tubathon so i read it in one day which is, you know, the best week of the year. This is like the new cover, which is way more like indie. The other one looks more like mainstream YA. I mean, the back is just all praise, so it's one of those, you know? It says, Solomon Reed hasn't left the house in three years, two months, and one day, which is fine by him. Um, but he makes 
friends and then he goes on an emotional adventure they're all so much fun and it's it's such a short read i really really like it there's some cool like relationships with the parents in this book which i don't know like i feel like i complain a lot about the parents in ya books or tv shows or anything but i like the parents in this from what I can remember. But it was really cute, it was really good, it was super unique and quirky. Number six is To All the Boys I Loved Before, which has been on my reading list for literally ever. This year I was like, I have to read it. It was like two days after the movie went out on Netflix and I'm like, I gotta read it, I gotta read it. So I read it in like two or three days. Finally, I've literally started that book like six times. Like since 2014 or whatever, like I've read the first few pages like so many times. And not that it was bad, I just like got so distracted. But like I read it and I loved it so much. It's so cute. Um, it's really hard for me right now in my mind to separate the book from the movie, but the book felt way more personal to Laura Jean and she's so mature but like so young at the same time and I just love to be inside her head. It kind of felt like a Meg Cabot character. So true to life and she feels like your best friend and I really love that about it. This has really been the year for Jenny Han when it comes to that and everyone's been loving the Netflix movie so I'm just so happy and I'm so happy I read it and I'm not a total poser and I can't wait to read the second and third one. Number five is an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. Let me tell you, I did not think this would make the list. I thought I was gonna give this two or three stars I was like, I don't like it. And then it totally turned around for me. I ended up really enjoying it. It's not a random YA fantasy book. It's like, I would say new adult sci-fi with like modern themes and just, you know, it's, it's Hank Green. And like, I don't really read books in his area. So when he wrote a book, I jumped into it, but I didn't really know what I was getting into and I was so surprised because I've never read anything like this in my life. So I've heard like nothing but positive things and I totally like wanted to love it, but from what I heard about it, like the Carls are robots that just started appearing in all over the world and they don't know if they're aliens or anything and then the main character gets like internet famous from it. I just hated that so much and I hated all the times that I've been pitched this book and I never thought I would enjoy it but it's really there's parts of this book that you can't just pitch to someone that you really just have to jump into it and read and like feel and it's really has that like optimistic Hank Green like hope community that he has that like you can't find anywhere else that like the whole world's gonna come together and care about this one thing and like put it together so there's so many parts of this book that I haven't heard and I've heard this book promoted so many times and everyone was summarizing it I was so tired of hearing it like the Carl's just started appearing let me tell from me to you to someone who like didn't really want to read this um it definitely has so many components that you don't know about yet so many things and not to say that it didn't have its annoying parts a lot of the stuff was so cringe especially internet stuff and it's coming from hank someone who's like all over the internet so like but even then like i was still cringing because i was like facebook live and like she just it was so predictable sometimes because you were just like okay so she's supposed to become obsessed with fame and so she becomes obsessed with fame and it's like the next chapter she's like obsessed with fame and it was really literal sometimes i feel like sometimes it tried to be like stream of consciousness but it just wasn't that good and there were so many things that I think he thought were funny but it would really distance me from it and I like couldn't relate and I was like that's such an awkward thing to say like I don't think that should be in there also a lot of it felt like Hank was writing it like what he thought like a 22 year old girl would sound like I wish he was just writing from a guy even if the guy was younger because I just felt so artificial when Hank was writing as like a bisexual young woman and I just didn't like that and I think so many people warned him about it and I don't understand why he persisted to do that. I didn't feel comfortable about it. I mean it was like okay. It was too hard to distance myself knowing that Hank wrote it I guess is what I'm trying to say. But it's it's good. It's a good book. Number four is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This movie also came out this year so this was also another thing I had to read. I listened to the audiobook. I really loved it. I thought it was a really good book. It's one of a kind. I've heard about it for so long and I'm glad I finally read it. It is a once in a lifetime book. It's like about time that we read more from like people of color and like understand their point of view and especially like the young adult like side of it was just so refreshing. She's such like a young person like in the book star but she's experienced so much and you're just like wow like holy shit and you kind of you know for like dumb white people like me like open your eyes and you're like oh wow okay so it's just you know. I feel like there was some cringe like if I was editing the 
audiobook, I would have cut like certain dialogue parts because it just like felt like it was too silly and fan fiction. Usually it was pretty grounded and I really, I really like the characters and I really like the place and the plot. Honestly, I didn't really like the movie, but it was good. It was like a good movie, but I think the book is better even though they're pretty similar. I mean, I don't usually notice when they change stuff. That sounds like such a dumb thing to say, but like I really don't. Like I totally believe it every time. But the book was really good and uh, yeah. Number three is Undimple My Rishi by Sandhya Menon. This I did not think I would like so much. Um, it got tons of praise and I honestly have to say um, Reading Solace or Kav really made me want to read it because they push it so much and I know it's one of their favorite books. I was so pleasantly surprised. And not only is super cute and intelligent and quirky and unique, I have to say I have never, I don't think I've ever read like Indian or Hindu rep that I can think of like at all and it was so beautiful to read it and like I felt so connected to them even though I didn't know like what all these words meant or like any of this stuff sometimes. Um, I think I was writing in a Goodreads update like I've never ever read such fleshed out characters that I like felt so connected to from like page 20. I love everyone in this book. It felt a little bit cliche because like there were like bullies and I was like okay no one would say that but I think it was necessary and it kind of um, was dramatic enough to like create tension and I mean I can't, ex I didn't experience what they experienced, like I don't know what other people experience so I can't even say that it's unrealistic. So I guess that's not even a valid thing to say. I didn't know that like I would love it so much. It's so good. So I think all in all this book made me really happy and so intelligent, the writing isn't fantastic. But if this is her debut I have to say it's one of the most well-written debuts ever because it's just like so smooth. What else can I say? So totally awesome number three. Number two is the first time a Colleen Hoover has made it to the list. The way I feel about Colleen Hoover books is very complex. You know, I read it and I hate it and I want to burn it. But I also, there goes through parts in the book where you're at a certain chapter and all these things are lined up and you're like, this is the best thing I've ever read. I can't stop reading this. I want to read this for the rest of my life. In that way, it's kind of hard because that's the kind of thing. So Colleen Hoover is either going to like make my hate list or make my like number two list. I mean, not number two list, but make my number two on the list. And that's what she did this year. I read a book finally by her that I didn't want to burn into flames. Um, and that book was without Merit. And um, Merit is the name of the character. She has a twin sister. And she falls in love with her sister's um, boyfriend. You know what? I love it. And I love it because they're all living in the, under the same roof. And I just love when that happens. I didn't even realize that, but I just, that's like a trope that I love so much. So they all like move in together. Merit has like so many problems. And also I think she's one of the youngest Colleen Hoover characters I've ever read because I'm pretty sure she's like 17 or 18 and Colleen Hoover is usually around like 22, 23. She is so dramatic and she has like a lot of problems. This is like a funny quirky book but it's still like so serious and it's so sad and like like every single Colleen Hoover book there are like triggers that come halfway through that are so intense and a lot of like real life scenarios that um, you have to be prepared for. So I'd say in this one, Triggers for Self-Harm and Suicide, it wasn't like a book about depression. It was really just a book about relationships and it was quirky and upbeat. I really, 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 really liked this book. It had me like in tears and squealing. Um, and I texted my friends so much about it because I was like, guess what just happened? Guess what just happened? That she ended up reading it. It's something I would read again. If you don't want to read Colin Hoover, don't go out of your way to read her. Like, that's really hit or miss and sometimes it will just make you so frustrated. Her books will always keep you up at night and always make you want to like scream. And of course there are a lot of problematic moments. Um, I don't agree with everything people have said online but I agree with a lot of it. Um, and you know I'm already in this trend and I've already read so many of her books. It's really just kind of something that I like to guilty pleasure read. So if I haven't talked to you about that before, that's how I feel about Colleen Hoover books. Without Merit is one of my, is my favorite one right now. All right, my number one book, listen, I did not think this would be number one because it's been recommended so much by Emma Books and like she's recommended a lot and like I don't like everything that like people tell me to read, you know? Like I'm always disappointed. So I didn't think I would like it, 
<laughs> but my number one is Moxie. Moxie is by Jennifer Math. Few Moxie girls fight back. Let me just read you the dedication. For all the teenage women fighting the good fight, and for my 12th grade current topics teacher for calling me a feminazi in front of the entire class. You insulted me, but you also sparked my interest in feminism, so really the joke is on you. Revenge is best served cold, you jerk. So that's how I feel because I was called a lot of names in my, what class was it? Like civics or whatever. So I'm not gonna get into that on my channel, but I just have to say like I've been through things in school and high school and I feel like after freshman year, I think everything went so much smoother and I found a lot of allies and a lot of people I could talk to. I really related to this. It's blurbed by Amy Poehler on the front. Moxie is sweet, funny, and fierce. Read this and then join the fight, Amy Poehler. I love this so much. I also read this as part of Booktubeathon. I read this in one day. It made me so happy. I loved it so much. Um, it's intersectional. It's YA. So this girl is in a small town high school. She kind of becomes an anonymous spokesperson and gathers a lot of attention and makes a lot of enemies but also makes a lot of friends through this. There's also, oh my gosh, there's also a love interest which first of all I love and I love that she's like there's so many different kinds of women and girls and that is so seen in this book there's like and there's like not it's like not weak to like be girly just it's so romantic and beautiful and like the message is so amazing you know it's hard being a girl but like this book made me feel really happy and I loved it so much Moxie Girls Fight Back I have to say easily the best book of 2018 so amazing so funny so bright, so inspirational. It was exactly what I wanted to read and I can't wait to read it again. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys read some great books this year. I'm still watching more movies so I can make my favorite movies of 2018 video. I love making these. It's so fun to talk about books. It's almost like I'm still a booktube channel. So I hope you enjoyed this guys. Um, I love you so much. Thanks for letting me talk to you for 20 minutes or 10 minutes or 7 minutes. I never know what these are going to get edited to. But I, um, yeah, I love you so much. So, goodbye.